book of Genesis chapter 4, we encounter the classic tale of the brothers Cain and Abel, both who made an offering to God according to their works. God showed favor towards Abel's sacrifice, and as such, Cain was mad. God asked Cain, Why are you angry? And warned him to do the right thing, because sin is crouching at your door, it desires you, but you must master it. That is what God said to Cain. Despite God's warning, Cain did nothing to control his impulses or his attitude of jealousy and resentment. Instead, he killed his own brother. There are those out there who believe that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are all one race. But if that is correct, why do we continue to allow the Cains of the world to constantly kill their brothers and sisters? Why, after suppressing, oppressing, and building an empire and generational wealth off the backs of enslaved black people, does Americans year after year continue in their blatant disregard for black lives when all we are trying to do is live our lives and build something for ourselves, our children, and our future? The events of the past week are a reminder of the racism, prejudice, and immorality that still exists in society. For many of us, this is very frustrating. There is a legitimate anger that swells up inside of you every time you hear one of those stories about a black person being unjustly killed. So what do you do with these feelings? In Romans chapter 12, verses 17 to 21, it is recommended that we overcome evil by being good to our enemies. Matthew chapter 5 verses 38 to 39 encourage us to turn the other cheek, the literal interpretation of which seems immoral and unjust. Really? You mean to tell me that we must remain passive in the face of evil? The same hoopla that was sold to our ancestors during slavery? In Buddhism, anger is considered the greatest evil because a small amount of anger can in an instant erase a world of merits and good karma. It is the most destructive because of how easily it degenerates into aggression and violence. For example, you might become blind with rage and do something that you regret for the rest of your life. Buddhism encourages calming your mind and being patient. It condemns harming others and encourages reflection or mindfulness as the right action. The rightness or wrongness of an action centers around whether the action itself would bring about harm to self or to others. Holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. In Nehemiah chapter 4, the Jews were working on rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. That was their mission. Enemies tried to stop the work using scorn and intimidation. We read that Sanballat ridiculed and mocked them, calling them feeble, discouraging them at every turn, pretty much saying, whatever it is that you build won't stand. Discouragement is as powerful a weapon as fear. They both oppose faith. I am sure that they were angry, but Nehemiah's response to the discouraging attacks was prayer. For him, prayer was the first and not the last resort. But wait a minute, how long will oppressed people continue to pray? Despite prayer, oppression due to institutional racism, fear and hatred continues to disproportionately and negatively impact our lives. When we strive, they steal our work and burn it down like they did the Black Wall Street. It's really discouraging when black men are incarcerated at an alarming rate when economically we earn less and save less. Academically, our students are undereducated. We cannot afford proper medical care. And even when we can, the quality of care is diminished because black bodies are expendable, as we have seen in the Tuskegee experiments and even now with the alarming death rates in the black community from COVID-19. We are policed differently and disrespectfully. We are shot and killed without justice no matter where we are. The chapter tells us 
that Nehemiah prayed and the people continued working despite the discouragement and threat of attack because they had a mind of work. Though our situation seemed discouraging, if we are to succeed in the task we set out as a people, we have to adapt a mind of work. Focus on the job of rebuilding our lives and our communities. The message here is clear. We are going to succeed. We shall overcome because God is with us. No weapons formed against us will prosper. Faith is not mere words. Faith is also action. Like Nehemiah, we are called to be wise and calmly trust God in the midst of the storms and to do the concrete things God would have us do to obtain the victory. Our challenge may be greater than ourselves. Even when the greatness and extensiveness of the task separated them, Nehemiah made a plan to keep in communication and to rally around each other at any point, at any moment, in the event of trouble. Brothers and sisters, my prayer is for us to be encouraged and to endure like Nehemiah and his people. So I encourage us to channel our anger, frustrations and fear into the work of building up ourselves, our families, our neighborhoods and our people. Our mission is building for ourselves the things we need to prosper while being able and willing to defend it and ourselves from the canes of the world. Remember, the full arm of God comes with a sword. If God is for us, who can be against us? Thank you. Speak to the dark. We need